Hello ladies, we are so glad that you are here. Original is a ministry of City First Church and it's our hope and desire that every single time you tune in, you find pockets of encouragement, inspiration, fun, and truth that can only be found in Jesus. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can stay updated with all things original. And make sure to download the original app because it's gonna be full of resources, updates, merge and all the ways that we at Original are impacting the world around us. And make sure to follow us on social media too. Now get ready to lean in and take notes because we believe God has something special just for you. Each of us are on a journey. This road trip called life has twists and turns, scenic routes, roadblocks, detours, pit stops, and at moments, breathtaking views. So how do we wisely travel the path God has set out for each of us? In this brand new series, Road Trip, we will talk about the essential elements needed to navigate this adventure called life, no matter what the terrain looks like. So gather your friends, pack your favorite snacks, and let's learn together, Jesus leading the way. Well, welcome back friends. I'm so glad that you're joining us this week for Road Trip. I pray that our times together um, so far have strengthened your faith for the journey that you are on. Let's dive in to today's message. Now, if statistics are true, then I am most likely talking to a bunch of women who usually ignore any of the little lights on the dashboard that may illuminate when there is something wrong with your car. The official term for these little icons that light up are called idiot lights. I am not kidding. These idiot lights indicate that something is wrong. Your oil is low, you're almost out of gas, your brakes are going, uh, your tire's losing pressure, something is wrong with the engine. When we ignore the idiot lights on our car for long enough, we will eventually end up breaking down on the side of the road, needing some roadside assistance. Now, if you have ever ignored an idiot light and then found yourself on the side of the road with a breakdown, the main emotion you will probably feel is this, regret. Why didn't I pay attention to that idiot light? If I just would have looked into why that light was flashing red on my dashboard, <laughs> I wouldn't be in this mess. Now this decision has cost me time, energy, money, and a whole lot of frustration. Every single one of us listening to this teaching today have at one point or another ignored warning signs and ended up making a decision we regret, not just with our cars, but with our lives. Maybe you knew in your heart of hearts that decision was wrong, but you just wanted to do it. Maybe you ignored the advice of a parent or a loved one that tried to warn you about a path you were headed down and you just did it anyway. Maybe you knew the Holy Spirit was warning you and you just kept driving with the warning sign flashing. You know, as a pastor, I meet so many people who have a hard time overcoming regret from a mistake that they made a day, a week, or even maybe decades ago. The truth is that all of us, everybody say that all of us, make mistakes and fail every day. Some are small, some are big, some are unintentional. Others are our decisions, plain and simple. Some are easy to rebound from. Others we struggle to see if God could ever forgive and restore. Some are a little hiccup in life, annoying with maybe small consequences. Other failures have lifelong consequences or present challenges that are present for years. So today, let's chat about how to respond when we mess up, whether it's by accident or on purpose, because it's not if, right, it's when. We're all gonna make mistakes and carry regret at some point. You know, the Bible is full of mess ups. 
There's stories of lying, murder, adultery, betrayal, anger, broken families, bad parenting, insecurity, pride, selfishness, you name it, the mess up is in here. And God used a lot of the people who had these screw ups. We're gonna talk about one such story today. We're gonna talk about how the Apostle Peter overcame his greatest failure. And we're gonna learn from him today. See, Peter is one of Jesus's closest friends. And when Jesus needed him most, Peter betrayed and disowned Jesus three different times in the span of one night. This being the night before Jesus is crucified, before he's executed, killed, and hung on a cross to die. Peter's mess up was big, you guys. And to really pour salt in the wound, the same night he betrayed Jesus, he had sat at dinner with him and said this in Luke chapter 22, verse 33. He said this, but Lord, Peter replied, I am ready to stand with you to the very end, even if it means prison or death. See, Peter had, you guys, the greatest of intentions. And oftentimes, we do as well. We want to be the good follower of Christ, the good husband, wife, parent, sibling, son or daughter. We want to do what's right. We don't want to hurt anyone. We don't want to let people down. We don't want to screw up our lives, right? But even with the best of intentions sometimes, we sin, we miss the mark, we hurt people, we say things we shouldn't, we do things we shouldn't, we get caught up in the moment, and we mess up. We sin. Let's just call it what it is, right? But I want you to see something pretty amazing about the heart of God. In the verse right before Luke 22, 33 that we just read, where Peter says, I am ready to stand with you, Jesus, even if it means prison or death. And the very first before this, verse 32, he says this, but I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this, after you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. Now, look at this closely. So before Peter ever denies Jesus or even promises to stand with Jesus, Jesus is saying to Peter, you'll be restored. And here's what your mission is to be. I mean, this is crazy, you guys. How amazing is this? Jesus, being God in form of a man, knew what Peter was going to do. Yet Jesus speaks to the post mess up Peter before Peter ever messes up. He says, you will be restored. If you've ever wondered what God thinks of your failure, it's summed up right here. Jesus has already spoken to your turning back, your restoration and your mission before you ever messed up. How absolutely beautiful. Do you see his heart towards us? Before you walked away from Jesus, before you cheated, before you went to that site, before you hurt that friend, before you lied, before you blew up at your kids again, <laughs> before you did that one thing that just weighs on you, his redemptive plan was already at work. I really want you to hang on to this truth. I pray that this is a revelation for you and that you cling to it. Now, does this preemptive grace, which I'm gonna call it, give us a pass to sin? Absolutely not. I think when we truly see and understand the heart of God for us, it compels us towards faithfulness to Him. You know, oftentimes when we fail, we feel guilt and then this word, condemnation, meaning we feel accused or judged. Romans 8 chapter 1 says this, a famous verse that if you've been in church for any amount of time, you've heard it. It says this, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
you might say, well, how do I know that I am in Christ? You know, once you made Jesus the leader and the forgiver of your life, that is now where you are found, in Him. You are found in Him when you made that decision. So if we know the heart of Jesus towards us, what should our response be when we failed? Well, let's look at Peter's response to Jesus in John chapter 21. Let's go ahead and start in verse 1. It says this, Later, meaning after Jesus has risen from the dead, Jesus appeared once again to a group of his disciples by Lake Galilee. It happened one day while Peter, Thomas the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Jacob and John, and two other disciples were all together. Peter told them, I'm going fishing. And they all replied, we'll go with you. So they went out and fished through the night, but caught nothing. Now listen, there's something important I want you to catch here. Peter processed his failure in the context of community. When we fail, we want to hide. We want to pull away. We want to be alone. We, we don't want to see people, right? Peter probably had some alone moments, but we see here that he didn't stay alone. He surrounded himself with people who knew him and understood him. This is why we have this series, why we encouraged you to gather with at least one other person, because you were not meant to walk this faith journey alone. This might sound crazy to some of you, but do you know that you were even meant to process your failures in the context of community with other people? When we fail, the enemy of our souls would like nothing more than for us to isolate ourselves, but that is the exact opposite of what brings healing. Relationships have a role in your restoration. And it is my prayer that we have the same response to the failures of others as the disciples did towards Peter. See, Peter said, I'm going fishing. And what did they say? We'll go with you. Instead of standing with a finger pointed in condemnation, they rallied around Peter. And may we do the same way we rally around each other in times of failure and heartache and disappointment and guilt. We don't leave people alone. We go with them. We journey with them. Let's be a we'll go with you kind of sisterhood. Because life is messy, right? Let's be committed to the messy parts of the journey as well as the good looking parts, okay? Because we all have them both. So what happens next in the story? It continues on in verse four. It says this, then at dawn, Jesus was standing there on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize that it was him. He called out to them saying, hey guys, did you catch any fish? Not a thing, they replied. Jesus shouted to them, throw your net over the starboard side and you'll catch some. And so they did as he said, and they caught so many fish, they couldn't even pull in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Peter heard him say that, he quickly wrapped his outer garment around him and because he was athletic, he dove right into the lake to go to Jesus. I love this. Peter went to Jesus. He didn't stay put. He didn't let guilt keep him stuck. He didn't head in the opposite direction. He didn't let regret send him on a long, exhausting swim to the other side of the lake. Further, listen, further won't make you feel better. <laughs> Instead, Peter dove right in straight to Jesus. When you failed, don't avoid the very one who can heal and restore. Instead, go to him. Once Peter and eventually the other disciples get to the shore and take care of their nets, Jesus has already prepared breakfast and they all sit down for a meal. Once they finished eating, scripture says that Jesus asked Peter this kind of question three times. Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, 
feed my lambs. After the third time that Jesus asked Peter the question, Scripture says that Peter was saddened because, man, I mean, Jesus, seriously, why are you bringing up Peter's failures like that? You know, this is what I've noticed. We live in an age of avoidance. We don't like to bring up people's failures. We don't bring attention to the screw up. So why did Jesus do this? A few thoughts. First, Peter is already thinking about his failure, <laughs> right? When we really fail, it sticks with us a long time. At least it does for me. And I think Jesus is just calling out what Peter is already thinking. Second thing is this, is that Jesus isn't as worried about Peter's failures as much as Peter is. Jesus doesn't desire perfection, our looking good, right? Our playing the part. He's more interested in our heart. Thus the question to Peter, do you love me? Third thing is this, for each of Peter's failures, Jesus calls him back to his purpose. Peter's purpose was feed my sheep, take care of my people, be a fisher of men, right? You know, through the years, I've had many people ask me if God can still use them even after they've messed up. And looking at Peter and this story, I would say the answer is a resounding yes. Now, things might look a little bit different sometimes, but if you are hearing this, I am sure you have experienced regret, either by choice or by chance. So when feelings of regret begin to weigh heavy on your heart and mind, I want you to remember Peter. Your failure isn't the end. It's a breakdown that, yes, has cost you time, energy, and quite possibly a lot of pain, but it is not the end of your journey. God knew we would fail, and yet he spoke to our failure before we ever did it. That is why God sent Jesus to us. So as we head into our discussion, I'm gonna ask you to do something very brave. I'm gonna ask you to be honest with one another and share some of the mistakes and failures that maybe you've been carrying with you. You know, James 5, 16 states that, therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. This is part of processing our failure in community. Remember, relationships are a part of your restoration. I know that many of us have been carrying the weight and guilt of past mistakes and regret, and the enemy makes sure to pile shame and condemnation on us, but God wants to bring us freedom to these areas today, I believe. So can we be a safe place for one another in these next few moments? Let's take some time to share with one another and pray for one another. In other words, let's move towards Jesus together. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, God, we are human, each and every one of us. God, and every single person within the sound of my voice, we've made mistakes, some big, some small. But God, even before we messed up, even before we ignored the warning signs and the idiot lights in our life, God, you had already spoken to our failures. That's why you sent us Jesus. And so God, I pray right now, I pray that those individuals right now who are experiencing condemnation and guilt and shame, God, I pray in these next few moments that you would break those things off. God, that you would bring freedom in the name of Jesus, that there would be such a sense, Lord God, of your forgiveness and your grace and your healing and your restoration that comes in these next few moments as we are vulnerable and we share and we pray for one another. We love you and we thank you for your grace and your forgiveness today. In Jesus' name, And everybody said, amen.
We are so thankful that you are a part of this amazing movement of women who are simply letting Jesus lead the way and choosing to live life to the fullest. We hope that you enjoyed this video and feel empowered to live original. Remember to hit the subscribe button, download our app, and follow us on social media. We will see you next time.